right. So we've talked about the inflammatory bowel stuff. Again, anything ITIS, irritation, inflammation of, all right, versus getting into the infectious etiologies. So infectious is pretty much the same thing. The same on the inflammatory, it does cross over. Pancreatitis, you can have some infections. The diverticulitis, some infections. Cholecystitis, some infections and all that stuff. So there is still some crossover. Problems with the infectious side of it is usually going to be your old, so we have here at the casino, young, not here at the casino, um, or something you're immunocompromised, your HIV, cancer, which you could have here at the casino. Okay. So anything from the aspect of damage allows for the um, the tissues to be um, the surrounding tissues to release problems, cytokines, and all that stuff, um, and then the allows for the body itself to be invaded by bacteria, viruses, fungus, fungi, and all that stuff. Um, tapeworms can cause problems and all that stuff. Um, ultimately, anything. Sepsis is the process where you have infection that goes from the GI system or any system into the bloodstream. That is definition of sepsis and all that stuff. AGE, um, <laughs> this is one of the most common things that we're seeing right now, um, which is the acute gastroenteritis. So they throw up, have diarrhea. Okay, that's gastroenteritis. All right. So the the Noroc, you guys, several years ago on the cruise ship. Okay, remember? Did you hear about the the Norwalk bar stuff on the cruise ships? So this is a common thing that we have: the Giardia, okay, with your parasites. So if you go out backpacking, okay, if you don't properly take care of your water supply and you're dipping your water from the streams and all that stuff, okay, you'll probably get a little bit of the Giardia. Um, cryptosporidium, uh, we kind of sort of this is the pigeons. Uh, pigeons carry crypt cryptosporidium, um, and, and HIV patients are really known for this problem. And then into the bacteria, a whole bunch of different things, Campylobacter, Vibrio, um, which you'll see in the um, the water. Um, this is the cholera that we had that killed a whole bunch of people back in the 1800s because of poor sanitations. Um, and then Shigella and Salmonella, um, this is the boy. Um, with the salmonella civil, actually probably been a, 10 years ago. I'm dating myself. Thank you very much. So anything that causes abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, that's gastroenteritis. All right. Several hours or several days, depending on um, their contact. Um, it's infection. It takes time for it to build into the system. So this person's going to have some nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and then seven days later, you have it. All right. You have to build up enough of the bacteria or virus or whatever in your system for it to cause problems. Typical from the diarrhea, nausea, vomiting. Uh, Side of the glands and then turns, you know, you have abscess formations. Uh, so what we have to know is it a, what's called a perirectal um, or if it's higher up and all that stuff. If it's perirectal, it's a, a bad, bad sign because it can track up um, the rectal intestines and all that stuff. So I've had patients lose part of their colon because of a perirectal abscess. Treatment, pain, kind of sort of figuring out. Um, they all have some constipation, drainage, uh, and all that stuff. Um, put your finger into the button and, well, you guys won't. The doctor will. Okay. Oh, I don't know. 
So pain with defecation or when you, you know, doctors put their fingers to kind of sort of they can feel a, 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 an abscess type mass and all that stuff. Bob obstructions, pretty much the whole aspect here is you either have a paralysis of the intestines or the, uh, the intestinal luminal diameter becomes compromised. Um, the most is adhesions um, in America. Um, outside, it's more of an infectious process and all that stuff. Um, adhesions, hernias, tumors um, are the, the, the common. Cramping pain, their belly gets distended, okay? We've probably all all seen this before. They have absent bowel sounds. Okay, nothing's moving. Um, and then, um, if you're palpating, sometimes you can even feel the the fecal matter. Small bowel cancer, um, Crohn's disease, hernias, uh, blockages, and all that stuff. Um, little kids that swallow batteries. Um, I've had one of the First patients that I took care of a long, long time ago had swallowed, I think it was like five or six watches, multiple jewelry. Yeah, he had issues. Yeah, yeah. He came in with a single episode because of vagal vagal and crapped all over himself, and we were the nurse was pulling watches out of the poop. It was fun times. Crampy, intermittent, um, they can have some diarrhea, nausea, vomiting with this. Um, the, the, a lot of times they're, again, they're constipated or they don't, they can't have a, a bowel movement. Um, the other term is called obstipation. Um, it's where they're, they have so much blockage that the fluid and the diarrhea actually flows around the blockage, um, just like a little bit of a river. So that term is called obstipation. <laughs> Monitor blood pressure, uh, volume, kind of them from that aspect. Um, we'll put nasogastric tubes into them, antiemetics. Um, if it's bad enough, then of course they have to go to the operating room to kind of sort of have things decompressed or taken out. Large bowel mechanical, usually they get the colon dilation. Um, there's a syndrome called Ogles V where you get a large bowel. It's a it's an unknown cause for large ball obstruction, or their their large ball just gets big um, with all that stuff. The treatment's pretty much the same. Small ball obstruction stop them from eating, drinking, putting in nasogastric tubes, um, and then um, if need be, surgery and all that stuff. But they have the same type symptoms: the bowel distension, peritonitis, um, if they have rupture and all that stuff. Hernias, uh, anything that kind of sort of protrudes out, uh, many different regions that have hernias. Again, the most common is going to be in the inguinal region, um, either what's called a direct or an indirect hernia, uh, and that's a lot of it depending on age. Um, the majority of the older patients kind of sort of have an indirect hernia where it goes down through the inguinal canal um, and protrudes through. Um, you can have abdominal hernias, umbilical hernias, all that stuff. Um, so pretty much the same thing. Different causes, obesity, staying prolonged, straining when you're trying to have a bowel movement, COPD, coughing, um, or like myself, just unfortunate. Most common is the gastric, the umbilical, um, and then the inguinal and the femoral. Uh, again, the inguinal is the the most common location for that. Uh, reducible, okay. What's a reducible type of hernia? Okay, or you can actually push the hernia back in. So they're complaining of abdominal pain. They're saying that they have a hernia, and you take the hernia, and you can push it back into the hole. Okay? Incarcerated. All right? This is where the hernia comes through, and you can't push it back in. Okay? 
From there, the strangulated, this is the bad one, it's an incarcerated hernia that is actually now blown up, it's blown out, and it has lost its blood supply and its dying tissue. All right, so they can actually lose part of their intestines. And then incisional hernia is just a hernia that's gone through some previous incisional site and all that stuff. Inguinal again from the aspect of cruising of the tear through the inguinal canal. The inguinal canal from there, uh, again, it has a connective pathway into the peritoneum and all that stuff um, through the somatic cord. So the intestines, it, it loops out and goes from there. If you can't push it back through, it becomes strangulated, which leads to necrosis and death. Supportive, pain management, assessor sepsis. All right. Back to foreign bodies is always a potential cause. All right. You can either do it from the upper or they can shove it from below. Um, fletching, have you guys heard of the term fletching? Fletching? Yeah, that's where they take a paper, um, a roll of toilet paper and a gerbil. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's called fletching and all that stuff. So, uh, assessment of rectal pain, um, defamation, they can, the problem again is with perforation of the rectums and all that stuff. All right. This was a patient from a long time ago. Um, this is a Yankee candle along with two golf balls. All right. Don't try to take it out. The problem with this, with the Yankee candle and all that stuff, you can't get it out. You just, you know, we actually had to take the patient to the operating room and all that stuff. No, they're out. they put the golf balls in first and the Yankee candle. <laughs> All right. So different cause different cause of bleeding. Okay. Um you can have it coming from the top or you can have it coming from the bottom. Um really treatment wise is um hydration, 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 um establish IVs. Um if it's really bad, these patients can die quickly on you. Um, you have a ruptured esophageal varicity, ruptured you know, hemorrhoids and all that stuff, um, or your Crohn's disease where they can have micro bleeding and all that stuff. But if it's really bad, they can have quick death. Upper, okay. So again, if it's a melana um, or if they're vomiting blood, like with the Mallory Wise tears or Borahov, something like that. Um, GI bleed, upper GI bleed. Um, this is my problem when I was 16, um, throwing up blood and all that stuff, zoonotic ulcers. Um, they've since found a bacteria, a Helicobacter pylori, that was a, a major cause for zoonotic ulcers and all that stuff. Large intestinal infections, ulcerative colitis, colorectal, older patients with rectal bleeding. Um, it's cancer until proven otherwise, um, and then hemorrhoids and all that stuff. Again, going back to the esophageal varices, okay, so if you look at the stomach esophagus, um, when we talked about the, the that portal canaval anastomosis, so you have the portal veins going into the liver and all that stuff, the, the canaval side of um, Low pressure, you actually have a buildup of the blood, um, which in turn allows for that to rupture, or they the blood vessels themselves rupture, they get the hematomas, and then that breaks out into the esophagus and then they throw up. Right. So your chronic alcoholics, um, hepatitis, so if you have not had your hepatitis B vaccination, okay, this is a reason why you should have your hepatitis B, hep C phase and all that stuff. I 
I don't need to know anything about you squirting. <laughs> yes. People with varices do have stuff squirting out from the top. Okay. Again, with varices, increase the blood vessels surrounding the esophagus. Um, it can't, the blood can't flow easily through the damaged liver. So then it goes into the portal, the portal vessels and all that stuff. They come in, fatigue, jaundice, anorexia. What's paritis? If someone is paritic, they're itching all over. Okay. And why do liver failure patients have paritis? Back in some education, you guys today. Okay. It's from the bile salt. Okay, so they can't get rid of the bile salt. They can't break it down or anything like that. So the salt actually gets onto their skin, um, and that's where the the pruritus comes through. The varices ruptures, of course, uh, just come from the throat. Dysphagia, they having throwing up the bright red blood, and then shock. Patients can die quickly on you. Management again, treatment, move. You know, aggressive, you know, therapy, um, and then ultimately we're calling GI doctors and um, doing scopes and bandings and all that stuff. Or they're drinking in it from a sippy cup. And it's okay. <clears throat> Someone, we have to start somewhere. Some people just take a lot later in life to learn how to drink and all that stuff. Out of a sippy cup. So, so reflux or GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Um, a lot of patients here. Um, the again, go back to the diaphragm. If you remember from that, the lower esophageal sphincter or the cardiac sphincter. Okay, it's not a true sphincter. Don't want to know that. So they get for that aspect, the intestine, or sorry, the stomach, kind of sort of pushes upwards. That's where again we develop the hiatal hernia. So anytime that you have the acid contacts going, the acid contents of the stomach going backwards, that's where your reflux and the damage. All right, and they can you can develop um, what's called Barrett's esophagus where they actually have a cancer of the lower esophagus because of chronic reflux. Yep. Again, just from the aspect, pregnant females, um, this is another reason why the lower, esophagus, the lower esophageal sphincter, um, it kind of sort of opens. Um, pregnant females will have the, the problem burning the chest. Um, the most common or when you think of classic um, symptoms, what position do these people usually say that they're in when they start having problems? Yep, laying flat. So they lay flat, then they start having all that. Heartburn, coughing, swallowing, bleeding, treatment focused on reducing the acidity, pepsid, protonics, all that stuff. Um, but again, you have, uh, one of our biggest things, if they've ever had anything, you know, make sure that they don't have an MI. Mallory wise, this is just a little bit of the tearing of the esophagus uh, versus Borjas, which is the complete tear. So it's just the inner layer where the Mallory wise gets torn. Um, usually they've had some periods of um, either coughing or vomiting, um, or they um, swallow something, they can't get it out, they have a lot of pressure in the esophagus and it tears. Um, and they get some light bleeding and all that stuff. Epigastric abdominal pain, usually just from the aspect of treatment is putting a scope down for you guys in the pre-hospital is transporting and going from there. Um, if it gets bad enough, um, some of the cardiothoracic surgeons have to go in and cut them open and, and fix it. So peptic ulcers, it's a little bit of a continuum from anything from gastric ulcers, trust ulcers, duodenals, depending on the time, um, and then different type of risk factors, stress, alcohol, smoking, 
Um, and then the Helicobacter pylori, which is a known uh, uh, bacteria causing peptic ulcer disease and all that stuff. So gastrics, if they increase the secretions of the pain you know, within a half an hour to an hour versus the pain two to three hours after eating, because that's, you know, that's when, this is when the acid, you know, starts, and then all the chyme uh, gets dumped into the duodenum um, and all that stuff. And then we do have what's called some stress ulcers, where you have Cushing's ulcers, which is damage to the brain, or curlings, uh, which is um, burns and all that stuff. So this is why we put a lot of patients on stress ulcer uh, prophylaxis in the hospital and all that stuff. Year, months, all that stuff. Um, just different causes of the the most the most common, of course, going with the Helicobacter or the roast of gastritis for people that drink a lot of dark colas um, has the phosphorus and all that stuff. Um, you can have the erosive gastritis and all that stuff. Ulcer formations and different treatments, different therapies. Uh, put a lot of patients on care kind of sort of coats the coverings, and then things that reduce the acid, um, pepsid, protonics, Tums, all that stuff. Left upper quadrant, they get this gnawing sensation. A lot of people actually, if you, they push in the epigastric um, with the peptical disease, it kind of sort of makes them feel better. Um, but then from there, the um, with it is the... Um, Disappears after eating, but then returns hours later and all that stuff. Vomiting, belching, heartburn. The problem, of course, is the aspect of it when it's you have the ulcer formation, okay, gets down into the um, subcutaneous region, and that's where all the blood vessels. So the blood vessels now starts having burning or starts pushing through, and they start throwing up blood or they start pooping blood. That's where your melana, okay, which is digested blood comes through and all that stuff. And if it gets bad enough, of course, there's times that you can actually have um, the duodenum in the stomach kind of sort of, or the the duodenum, um, it burns through the duodenum into the aorta, um, and you have a fistula, duodenal aortic fistula, when you have a whole bunch of, that's really bad. Hemorrhoids, just uh, anything from the outpouching of, Um, irritation, pains, and all that. Um, this is what they kind of sort of say it feels like. <clears throat> Mass, rectum, hematochesia, and all that stuff. pre hospitals pretty much just, you know, controlling, supportive management. Um, we give them creams, high-fiber diet, and all that stuff. Anal ulcers, um, this is kind of is a tearing um, the most is uh, common at the 6 o'clock and noon or your upper. Um, the, a lot of times you'll actually have in the different positions, like with Crohn's disease and all that stuff. Um, children with anal fissures, um, babies, you have to kind of sort of take into consideration as for the inconsolable child, do they have an anal fissure as a potential? Um, and then they're just from having hard bowel movements. Kids with anal fissures, of course, always have to take into consideration of abuse, okay, um, and to go from there. Painful, defecation, dressings of the anus, don't pack it, nothing like that. Hmm. Any questions on that? Bleeding, blockage, inflammation, infectious. All right. Pediatrics, a cause for them to have problems. Um, uh, a lot of them can have just in the vomiting, sodium potassium problems, uh, which in turn can cause other problems. Genetic anomalies, this is gastrochesis, where they have the um, intestines and all that stuff are protruding through the abdominal wall. Um, wrap this up, put it back in. Um, this is a lot of times seen with your um, premies and all that stuff. Um, have intestinal malrotation, 
um, where the intestines itself is kind of sort of off into different areas, um, site, what's called situs inversus and all that stuff, um, which is a bad thing. So when genetically or when we're uh, embryologically, uh, what happens is the intestine kind of sort of gets protruded out, rotates, and, get, and then gets pulled back in. Um, if it doesn't get rotate and pull back in, this is where they get the malrotations and problems and all that stuff. Pyloric stenosis, okay. You get a thick band, the pyloric stenosis, or the uh, pyloric sphincter is at the, the bottom of the stomach. This looks familiar for you. Uh, yep. Um, in the past, they used to um, cut these kids or cut the babies. So the, the classic is young males, firstborn, um, and they're feeding, 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 and then they start throwing up the quote-unquote projectile vomiting. Okay, This is the kid that can vomit, and it splatters stuff on the opposite wall. Yeah. Um, they can have some bleeding and all that stuff. So what they do is... Um, uh, now uh, they just go in laparoscopically and do myotomy, which they just cut the muscle, uh, which in turn allows for the sphincters to open up, and they don't have any problems in later life. Yeah, they now it's not that bad. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Kill assessment, uh, skin turgors. Um, a lot of this is the kids that they've been throwing up for several days, um, so they've had problems with the fluid resuscitations, um, and then getting history from the parents. You know, other things to take into consideration with these kids because they've they've been vomiting and it's been going across the room. So take into account for stuff like abuse, trauma, and all that stuff. Okay, does the kid have head injury problems and go from there? Um. Gastrotomy tubes, uh, we see this a lot more in kids, different problems and all that stuff. Um, it can become clogged, dislodged, and all that stuff, blocked. Um, so from there, you know, it's pretty much you're not doing much with the, the G-tubes and all that stuff in the field. Okay. Do recommend, though, if you, uh, with this, take the tube with you to the emergency room, Okay so often that we get the parents, I'm like, okay, what tube is it? I don't know. Okay, where's the tube? At home. You know, so for us to try to replace it, it really helps and all that stuff. Exactly. Size and type, and there's a whole bunch of different things with that. It was either this or putting the dinosaurs one commercial, the dinosaur one with the fart, dinosaur fart. <laughs> All right, so different things now. All right, so again, we've talked about the pediatrics, the infectious, uh, inflammatory blockages, bleedings, and all that stuff. So your triple A's, abdominal aortic aneurysms. All right, anytime the abdominal, uh, sorry, the aortic wall, because there's three different layers um, to the aorta. All right. What happens is the intima kind of sort of starts breaking, um, and blood starts getting into the between the intima and the medial layers, um, and then ultimately it will go through the outside layer, um, and then that's where you have the tear and death and all that stuff. So your pulsatile mass, you touch, you can actually see some of these patients, their abdomen is, is you know, pulsating and all that stuff. All right. Again, the biggest problem, of course, is when it goes to the rupture and shock. Um, for the, they have the exsanguination. I don't know why I can't say it right now. Mesentic ischemia, uh, any interruption of the blood supply. All right. Um, this is usually with your um, elderly patients, atrial fibrillation. They're not taking their Coumadin. Okay, clot breaks off. They have the the amb, uh, embolism and all that stuff. Um, you can also have cancer gets into this problem, thrombus um, formations, um, and then you know of course anything else fades to spasm. Gradual, 
versus sun. Um, the big ones, if it's a gradual, it's usually more along the tumors and all that stuff. Sun non-center is the ones that have the atrial fibrillations uh, blockage. Uh, nausea vomiting. Um, usually it hits to have epigastric abdominal pain um, and then the rectal bleeding and all that stuff. Rapid transport, watch for shock. They, these patients crash on you quickly. Ectopic for the pregnant female, all right? Different locations um, that the uh, embryo can kind of sort of attach outside the fallopian tubes, inside the fallopian tube. Usually it's in the, the distal two-thirds of the fallopian tube is the location for tubal pregnancies. Um, there's also been known for stuff in the ovaries and all that stuff. So any abdominal pain, you know, in the female, childbearing age, okay, they're pregnant until proven otherwise, all right? And then they are ectopic until proven otherwise, especially if they have vaginal bleeding and all that stuff. Cirrhosis, different causes, etiologies, and all that stuff. Um, early liver failure, hallmarked um, with the, hypo, the portal hypertension. They have problems with bleeding. Um, and then, of course, they have the problems with the detoxification. All right. So they can't break down bile, um, or actually the the hemoglobin. They can't break down the hemoglobin. So what what does their skin or eye color look like? Jaundice. Okay. Icterus. Jaundice. Weak fatigue, anorexic, and then pruritus. Going back to the pruritus, they can't break down the bile salts, so that gets um, itchy and all that stuff. Um, they get the stri They can have the striae and all that stuff. Um, enlarged liver, um, turgor problems. Um, they can have what's called spider tannins ectasia, where they get the spider veins on their, their skins and all that stuff. Um, eyes with the jaundice and all that stuff. So a whole bunch of different causes. Um, they can have the uh, hemorrhage or even the scrotal, um, the blood vessels of the scrotal region and all that stuff too. Multiple stages and all that stuff. Alcoholic stools, which is the fatty stool, um, where the stool actually looks, it's floating on the top. You know, it has a nice glycerin fatty stool and all that stuff. Dark urine, the icterus or the jaundice. Uh, yeah. Ascites, the swelling of the abdomen um, with the fluid waves and shifts and all that stuff. Supportive, control bleeding medications. Um, and then... If you need to, you know, give medication, kind of sort of try to go at the lower end stage, because so many of the medications are, you know, degraded by the liver. Um, and again, with these patients, if it's a true liver patient, giving them glucagon isn't going to really do much for them. All right. So, you know, for the advanced EMT and paramedics, if they're a diabetic, you know, they don't have the glycogen stores and all that stuff. It's encephalopathy, this is usually a late stage where their liver can no longer break down the ammonia or get rid of the ammonia. Um, and then from there, have increased ammonia, which causes the brain to kind of sort of go loopy, um, uh, problems with the blood-brain barrier, um, and all that stuff. Memory loss, the coma, they can have other things from infectious renal failure, you know, GI bleeding, and all that stuff. Supportive, check blood sugar, transport, okay? Other things to take into consideration, your traumas, your overdoses, and all that stuff. Kidney stones, all right? So what's the classic signs and symptoms for kidney stones? Back pain, okay? So you get the flank pain, all right? And how do you test for what's a, one of the tests that you can do? So CVA tenderness, tap on their back. Okay. Okay. Sick minds, sick minds. All right. So hitting on their back, tapping on their back, they get the uh, costal vertebral angle, uh, tenderness, and all that stuff. Um, this is the flat pain that radiates around to the front, 
um, into the kidneys or towards the bladder and all that stuff versus the ones that the pain starts in the bladder region and goes you know, upwards. That's more of your classic of your urinary tract infections with um, development of um, uh, kidney infections and all that stuff. Nausea, vomiting, hematuria, extreme restless. The other patients, um, they have a, the kidney stone shuffle, um, but they just can't. It's a um, the calcy type pain because of the stone is it moves, gets caught, it moves, gets caught um, as it's going down the ureters and all that stuff. PID, um, they again they have a, a the whole aspect of the the pelvic inflammatory shuffle. Um, they're usually it's a little bit of hunched over. They they do a little bit of a small walking because they don't want to move anything. Um, the whole pelvic region is inflamed. Uh, this is your typical um, chlamydia, gonorrhea, um, where they have the vaginal discharge and all that stuff. Fallopian tubes become infected and they can have scarring and all that stuff. <clears throat> So the majority of the things that we have um, uh, in the region is a blunt trauma, um, different um, causes, crush injuries, um, compression, deceleration forces, getting ran over, stuff like that, um, and then any of your closed abdominal injuries. Um, shearing, just from the rapid deceleration, the organs are still moving forward, um, and um, this would be like the uh, intestines that still move forward. Um, and it's kind of sort of tethered um, to the wall, um, so things get pulled apart, uh, ligamentals, so trice and all that stuff. Um, this is also one of the, um, or up into the heart region, um, that the aorta, uh, the same thing that you have your, the patients that usually die, um, they have the aortic rupture because the, the aorta itself is tethered and it can't go anywhere. Uh, bleeding abdominal bleeding. Stuff, shoulder pain, hypertension, um, and think of your any of your multi traumas. Crush injuries, baseball bats getting run over by a car. What was it the eight year old the other day got a hold of grandmother's keys or something, ran over? Yeah, read that in the news or something. Falling objects, you know, that's always a bad sign and all that stuff. Versus the compressions, any of the direct blows, punched kicks. You know, um, getting hit with the base again um, can have damages and all that stuff. Versus the penetrating, um, stab wounds, gunshots. Um, the gunshots, I mean, that's a, a, a several hour lecture by itself on another of that stuff. Um, but all the different things of, you know, the force impact, you know, going in versus coming out and all that stuff. Just, you know, low velocity, medium velocity versus high velocity, kinetic energy, you know, going through the whole thing of how much damage that you can do. Different contributory things, trajectory, is it going down, up, straight? Um, is it glancing, blows, and all that stuff? Um, and then, of course, the different, you know, single odd versus double odd, you know, and all that stuff versus 45 versus a 22. Um, just the bowl profiles. Evisceration is just a term that any time that um, the abdominal contacts kind of sort of pull through the abdominal wall, um, and this is how your samurai from a long time ago would, you know, kill themselves um, if they had problems with their honor, um, that they would slit their stomach and themselves and all that stuff, and then get their head chopped off. Strangulation, we talked about this already um, from the aspect of the protruding, uh, when we talked about the hernias and all that stuff. Uh, a lot of times they do have the aspect of having their knees bent forward, um, trying not to bear or cough down. Impaled objects, never a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, best that I've ever seen was a guy that got um, rebar. He had a piece of rebar stuck through him. He fell. Um, I've seen patients that have, you know, slipped falling on the metal fences, get 
you need a pelt on the fences and all that stuff. Um, infection is always a, a huge problem. Yes, he probably does need a tetanus shot. Liver injuries, anything right-sided, abdominal, um, fractures to the, the seventh to ninth ribs, um, and then the splenic injuries, again, on this other side of the, the left side and all that stuff, penetrating objects uh, versus the splenic. Um, sometimes the splenic injury has been you know, 24 hours later. Um, I've actually seen patients several days later come in with left upper quadrant pain because um, they do have some the the splenic fissures and all that stuff is a little bit attachment. Again, blood trauma is the most common mechanism of injury. Ninth, ninth to tenth rib fractures, left upper quadrant tenderness, hypertension, tachycardia, and then pain to the left shoulder. Pancreatic um, high energies, you know, uh, from the aspect of getting hit into the upper, the epigastric region, handlebar injuries, um, getting punched in the solar plex and all that stuff. Um, versus rheumatics, high speed injuries, not wearing proper seat belts or wearing just the lap belt, you get folded over and then the abdominal contacts get pushed upwards um, and it tears the diaphragm. Um, and it's nothing amazing on doing a CT scan and seeing all the your stomach and intestines up in the chest wall. Difficult to breathe, just let you know. Uh, penetrating trauma, most common, um, ruptures, peritonitis, stomach, uh, your, from the aspect of the stomach ruptures, same things that we talked about, you know, rebound tenderness, rigidity, and all that stuff. Duodenal injuries, same like everything else. Um, the, the duodenum can't really, it's tethered. Um, so the motor vehicle high-speed accident, accidents, you know, hit the back of a car, things get pulled, gets torn, um, and then they have, you know, pain and problems, you know, several hours to days later. Same thing with, with the stomach, the aspect of tearing the stomach, you know, all the acid stuff kind of sort of spills out, you know, have to go in and, and operate and go from there. Retroperitoneal, uh, again, this is the aspect of if you have um, a hematoma or injury. Um, a lot of times patients on Coumadin or blood thinners will have this problem. Um, the colon sign is that the bruising around the umbilicus versus that gray turner that we saw um, is your retroperitoneal hematoma and all that stuff. Any of the vascular stuff, again, high-speed injuries, gunshots, you know, stabbings, and all that stuff. Um, kidney injuries, tackling, football. Um, not so much. I haven't seen a lot with that, especially with the, the new pads and everything that's coming through. Uh, but a lot of your boxers, MMA fighters, um, where they're taking the rib shots and all that stuff. Pee and blood, never a good thing. Rupture pain, um, any of the gross heat material from the kidney problems. Um, if it gets, you know, the kidney slapped around enough, it will swell just like everything else. Um, and then the kidney uh, uh, breaks the uh, fascia, um, which in terms of have, you know, potential problems there and lose a kidney. Um, any of the penetrating, getting stabbed and all that stuff too. Uh, same thing with the urinal injuries, um, just from aspect. The movement usually from car accidents. Um, a lot of the urinary injury is actually more of complications from, you know, going in and operating, doing other operational procedures that we, we have problems with the ureters. Um, bladder from the aspect of you know, accidents, car accidents, and all that stuff. Um, full bladder, and then, you know, having the damage and all that. Ruptured high mortality rate, um, trauma is, the, again, the biggest thing. Urine gets into abdominal cavities, and that's it. Questions? Comments?